All right, go. Number 13, Chupacabra Bill. We have a landmark day today. Uh, finish those other bulkheads, put them in the back. We have a chassis. There's a few little miscellaneous pieces, hinge mounts, stuff like that. All the hard points are done. All the bulkheads are done. Nothing is welded together yet. This this thing could come crashing down at any second. I've just got it clamped together and so forth, so we're not responsible for accidents if it does. But uh, we have a chassis. Actually, we have three chassis. We have one up here on the jig table that I'm satisfied with, and we have two more down here in a scrap pile that I am not satisfied with. So, three chassis. I uh, was going to dress up in a tuxedo today to celebrate, but then I realized if I did that the next landmark day, what would I do for an encore? Front bulkheads you've already seen. Rear bulkheads. Got the other bulkhead in. These shock towers are not just perfectly straight. Again, they're just sitting there, but start to get the idea of what's going on here. This is the uh, the bulkhead we just built. This is a battery tray. Battery is held in. These these are rib nuts here. That piece comes up like so. Holds the battery in right there. You can see the the uh, engine cross member tower, the shock towers. This is all uh, sway bar reinforcement here. Bar comes up. I've cut that since last time. Got it to correct distance. This isn't folded yet because I want to glue it, but start kind of seeing what's going on here. Uh, can you can you kind of zoom around and up and get some of that? Then around to the back. All of this stuff, the tolerances on it, the ability that that machine gives for construction. I was pretty dang good at holding tolerances with a chop saw and an angle grinder. But this thing, just if you look at this right here, uh, this piece hold, holding this uh, frame rail in place. This piece comes this way and holds it, comes here, holds it, this holds it, these pieces line up. Even just setting all this up here, everything just lines up absolutely amazingly. I am I am pleased and and amazed at the same time at, at how the tolerances on this, everything is exactly where it's supposed to go. You come around here maybe and look in here. This is a the front motor mount, again, I think I would said earlier, I have not drilled these holes here, which are the front small block Chevy holes, but that's a motor mount right there, the rib nuts. I've just done that to kind of set that in there and see what it starts looking like, but this, look at the lines right here, look at how all that's lining up, just incredible to me. Uh, this motor plate. There's another motor plate that goes here that is the adapter plate for the engine and transaxle. Then there's another motor plate on the back that catches the transaxle. Everything is on motor plates. If you want to change the drivetrain, change the transaxle and our engine, you change the motor plates instead of having to redesign a chassis. Right now, there is 70 pieces here. There was 55 pieces before we got rid of our folded paper design, but whole chassis, 70 pieces. If you remember, we talked about how this rear bulkhead on the old uh, conventional tube frame chassis was 170 pieces. So, you know, maybe, maybe 100 pieces tops and we're going to have a chassis on this thing. Uh, let me look at my notes here. I want to show you one other thing. Well, at least while I'm while I'm here, these are the uh, reinforcing plates that go with the A arm mounts. Those go right there and right there. That's the uh, upper front A arm mount. Same thing down here, so forth and so on. We drilled this uh, floor pan 
to fit the holes in the jig table, we're going to use our ACO fasteners to plug these holes when we're done. But those are also reference points. If, it, if this car is ever in a wreck, ever crashed, ever needs to be put on a frame machine, you have exact reference points here. You have some other reference points. Come back here and look in here. Uh, see that, see on the, the front of the motor plate right there, there's also uh, holes in the chassis there and come up to the front a second. There's holes outside the uh, passenger compartment that index as well. So anytime that's going on a frame machine, every, there, there's a reference point. I want to show you one other thing here. This hole right here, and this this motif, these holes all in line, are similar on all the bulkheads, front and back. See this hole right here? This hole right here, which again is going to be plugged with a HACO plug. Come back here, look at this hole right here, and then notice how all of these cross members and bulkheads right here have similar holes in similar locations. Those holes line up, every one of them with each other. I want to take this pedal assembly out right here, which is may or may not get in the way, but I want to show you something. I want the cameraman to look right through this hole right here. <laughs> Camera person? Okay. <laughs> Camera lady? My wife? <laughs> <laughs> to look through this hole right here. Come back down here a second. And I'm going to take this flashlight and I'm going to hold it on the coinciding hole right back here. Okay? Come up here. Through this hole right here, dead nut all the way through it. Is it? Can you see my light, camera person? Uh huh. Yes. Okay. So, not only do you have the reference points to fasten it down, you can shoot a laser beam down the length of the chassis on either side and know exactly how square it is within a thousandth of an inch. Got this thing. Speaking of camera ladies, how much time is that? Seven, eight, oh, minutes. Okay, good eight minutes. Got this thing the way I want it, not just the way it looked good on paper, but the way I want it. Uh, took a lot of scrap to do it, but one test, life rule number 37, I believe it is, one test is worth a thousand engineers. I can't see it on paper and know that's what I want. I can say that's pretty close, but I've got to actually look at it, feel of it, see it, study it, and then I know it's exactly what I want. Another story on that, I'm getting some help on this from some people associated with Peterbilt. Peterbilt has their assembly plant over in Denton, the R&D developmental departments there. They have subcontractors all through that area in North Texas. And, uh, you know, we built two cars before this. The first two used the conventional Countach bodywork, and they used conventional uh, chassis design. And during the course of that, the Peterbilt guys are primarily involved in the fiberglass and the bodywork and the coachwork. But in the process of those cars, we were trying to get the, the roll cage sorted out. And they said to me, you don't need to do all of that. If you'll just send us what you want, we can put it in the program. And we can mesh the, the body program to that program and, and design it that way. And I said to them, guys, I appreciate that. I understand what you're doing. And I appreciate the help you've given me, and I don't want you to think that I'm trying to do it an old-fashioned way or not, not appreciative of, of the technology, but I just can't do it that way. In order to know if it's what I want, I'm jumping up and down on it and seeing how, how rigid it, it seems is more valuable to me than any SolidWorks program. And I thought they were going to say, 
well, if you don't want to help yourself, we can't help you. But instead, what they said was, you know, we used to build trucks that way, and it worked pretty good. So, in spite of the new technology, I still got to look at it, see it, shake it, feel it, see if it's what I want. And, again, three chassis later, I think it is. Anything else I wanted to talk to you about? I believe that's about it. Huh? Huh? The dog? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Come here, little dog. Come here, dude. This is what you heard scratching on the door. This is Carmelita Goofmutt. What do you think? She has been in, her motorcycle jacket has 38 states on it in three countries. All right, number 13. Good thing I didn't have a tuxedo on tonight. That's it.